So I actually meant to pause the last video, but instead I accidentally hit stop record. So we're just breaking off into a new video. So as I said, I already went over the problem. You are the audit supervisor and you have a pre-meeting. And so you are trying to determine, are there any issues with the control environment? So the first one, you go to uh, GoGo's audit committee, which is the corporate controller, treasurer, financial president, or financial VP, and budget director. Well, in that one, all of them are company employees, and they're also company employees that are in charge of uh, various portions of the financial operations of that organization. So really, they are overseeing themselves. So there is no independence, no um double check by somebody else who's not involved in those daily operations so that is definitely an issue lack of oversight from the board of directors is how we have that issue b you recognize the treasurer as a former aide to ernie eggers who was convicted of fraud so the first question is first of all the this person who is a treasurer so a high cash person, you know, somebody who has access to a lot of assets is an, was an aide. So it is unclear with just this one sentence how much that individual was involved. This is where you go to the court case and if they were in the middle of everything, but the only reason they're walking free is because they were a witness, I would not be considering them necessarily for a treasurer's job. Um, if it's pretty clear that they did not know what was going on, that is another scenario. So this is where having a, doing some due diligence prior to putting that individual in that location might be worthwhile. The next one, management explained its ch uh, plans to change accounting methods for depreciation from accelerated to straight line. Management applied that if your firm does not concur with the change, GoGo will employ other auditors. So first sentence, are you able to change depreciation methods without concern? That should not be a problem on, in of, of itself. Where the issue lies is they're threatening to change auditors if you don't agree with me. So that kind of threat would be a red flag if i were an external auditor if they're making threats that if you don't agree with me i'm going to go take my ball and go home or in this case take my audit fees and pay somebody else uh would be a red flag i would run if you were the auditor because if they're making threats over depreciation what other things are going on uh that should raise all your professional skepticism off to the <laughs> highest level um, the next one, you learned that the financial vice president manages a staff of five internal auditors. Once again, the person who's in charge of most of the financial operations on a day-to-day -day basis is also the one leading or the supervisor for the internal auditors. So once again, there's a conflict of interest there. And... Uh, e, I think I had you go through E. All the management authority seems to reside with three brothers. Now, um, this can get complicated. It is not necessarily a direct violation. Um, however, with a publicly traded company, having all of the top individuals be three brothers in one family and the board of directors, you know, assuming these are kind of all together, um the board of directors being all internal employees and some of the other individuals there it's going to cause a lot of stickiness um and plus sometimes you know assuming everybody gets along great this isn't a huge deal necessarily but i would be a little concerned as an auditor especially given all the other situations and actually, if you look down the list of problems, they there are quite a few things listed that if all of these were happening in an individual company, you would be very concerned as an auditor. It, it's kind of an environment 
ripe for fraud um, and just a lot of errors. Okay, so the, once again, this is problem one in the book. I would look through the rest of the problem because understanding issues with the control environment um, is will be quite helpful later. All right, so moving on into risk assessment. So this is the next step. Uh, so management should look, basically sit down uh, and think of a list of all internal and external events that could affect your ability to achieve whatever your goals are. So these are all of your threats that we talked about. So everything from new competitors, a downturn in the economy. Um, I think some things that have happened, you know, if you have a restaurant change in, in eating habits, uh, I know the Atkins craze of about 15 years ago closed several donut shops, for example, in the Quad Cities. So, you know, changes like that to um, having your computer system hacked, to having an employee commit theft, to natural disaster. So all of those things are threats. Now, it's safe to look at every event. So events can have positives. So those that are positive are opportunities, and those that are negatives are threats or risks. Uh, of course, we're going to focus on the risk or threats because that's we can want to control those. We'll let the opportunities go to the strategy folks, uh, and you can talk more about those in that class. So you want to look at how these risks, you know, how you can manage them, how can we control for them to not prevent them or reduce the how they will affect us achieving our goals or objectives. So you can use quantitative and qualitative methods to do that. So what you do is you think of things in terms of likelihood. So what is the possibility of this happening and our impact or exposure? Once again, those two terms are interchangeably. So uh, once, as we talked about in class, a tornado has a higher impact, possibly a million dollars, but it has less than 1% chance of happening on any given day versus the likelihood of somebody committing a shoplifting is very high percentage, very high likelihood, but the dollar impact is probably is a lot less on each occasion. So what you could do is look at these in a quantitative method. So first, there's two things to look at risk. We have inherent risk. So this is the risk that exists before any controls. So what's the risk of getting struck by lightning? What's the risk of somebody stealing goods from your store today? So those are all possibilities. Then after, controls are put in, we have what is the residual risk. And you can kind of determine this just alone from understanding the English language. Inherent risk is inherent into the process automatically there versus residual means leftover. So as I said, we can use a cost benefit analysis to do that. So management has really three ways in order to um, handle each risk. So you have the full list. So the first thing we could do is reduce the risk. This is what internal controls are for. You reduce the risk of something happening. Then we could avoid the risk. So we're not engaging in that activity. So most asbestos manufacturers have gotten out of the business because of the risk of lawsuits. Um, the risk, their cost is too high to do business in a certain state due to different conditions. You can get out of that business or no longer produce whatever is the risk. Share the risk. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can handle this. One, insurance. This is a perfect way to insure to share the risk, you pay the deductible, the insurance company pays the rest based on the premiums that you've paid up to then. 
Otherwise, outsource. So if it is an activity that could be risky, you can outsource to somebody somebody else. Now you are sharing the risk between them. If they can't get it done, it's still a risk to you, but they also have some of the risk. Or the last one, you could accept and do absolutely nothing. All right, I already have a video recorded on doing this problem five out of the textbook. It is a little spreadsheet to show you how to quantitatively analyze. So I'll let you go ahead and view that and we'll come back and talk about control activities.